Located in Canada's beautiful northern Alberta, the Athabasca Oil Sands Deposit is the second largest petroleum resource in the world. Attempts at commercial development of this massive undertaking began at the turn of the 20th century. The Alberta Energy Department estimates there are 2.5 trillion barrels of bitumen in the ground, of which 315 billion barrels are recoverable. These huge deposits underlie 140,800 square kilometers, or one quarter the size of France. So what is this gummy, gooey, tar-like stuff they call black gold? And what's all the fuss about? Thick and sticky like blackstrap molasses, oil sand is approximately 70% sand and clay, 10% water, and up to 18% oil or bitumen. Oil sands is a very, very technology intensive business uh, because every step of the way from the shovel to your gas tank in between, there's, there's thousands of, of steps. It's like a manufacturing business, very, very technology intensive. In order to find a cheaper way to produce oil sand, you have to apply a, more and more technology to find smarter ways of doing every step. And that drives a lot of research and development here in Alberta. You know, Albertans have done, gone a long ways already to applying uh, technology to the oil sands. And I think we'll find going forward, there'll be a lot more investment in the R&D and we'll find cheaper ways to take oil sands from the ground and put it in your gas tank. So what it's done for Alberta is drive a lot of high tech jobs. We not only have a lot of engineers and scientists working in the oil sands, but we buy. We buy all these technologies, computers, uh, high tech instrumentation systems and so forth in order to produce oil sands as cheaply as possible. New technologies continue to be invented and reinvented on a scale dwarfing other massive equipment industries. From all across the globe, thousands of people from many different types of industries have traveled to northern Alberta to see this technology in action. Oil sands researchers have worked with some of the most respected universities, agencies and institutions from around the world. Every year, the oil sands industry spends millions of dollars improving the technology, making the process more cost-effective, while at the same time, lessening the long-term impact on the environment. So, how do we get the bitumen out of the ground? There are basically two ways to extract oil from oil sands traditional surface mining, and a somewhat new technology called in situ. Surface mining is effective when the oil sand is less than 75 meters below the surface. The overburden is first removed. Overburden is a layer of clay, sand, and silt which lies directly above the oil sands deposit. It is used to build dams and dikes around the mine and will eventually be returned when the land is reclaimed. When all of the overburden is removed, the oil sand is exposed and is ready to be mined. The enormity of surface mining is truly unimaginable. Early commercial oil sand recovery included the use of gigantic drag lines and bucket wheel reclaimers. Originally repurposed coal mining technology, but on a more grandiose scale, These gargantuan drag lines and bucket wheels have been all but phased out and replaced with huge trucks and shovels. These trucks are the largest and most technologically advanced trucks anywhere in the world. Over 400 tons and getting larger. Each shovel can scoop over 100 tons of oil sands in one fell swoop. In years gone by, Extensive conveyor belt systems transported the mined oil sand from the recovery site to the extraction plant. New technologies are phasing out these conveyors and replacing them with hydro transport pipelines. The idea with hydro transport is that instead of using big drums to break up the oil sand, you simply mix the material in with water and pump it around in a large pipe. By transporting the material, you break up the or and release the oil from the sand. You then have a material after you separate it that you can ship for a long distance and this is what Syncrude and Suncor both use 
to go from a mine site to their upgraders. So they can keep moving the mine away from the upgrader and still get efficient transport of material back and forth. About 7% of the oil sands in the Athabasca deposits can be recovered using current surface mining techniques. But this 7% will sustain an enormous amount of mining activity well into the future. Much of the remaining 93% will be recovered using in situ methods. In situ is a Latin term which literally means in place. In situ or steam assisted gravity drainage, SAGD, was a technology pioneered, developed, and implemented in Alberta. As the name suggests, it's about recovering the bitumen um, from in situ without uh, physically mining all of the uh, sand and, and bitumen mixture. The way Suncor does that is a combination of uh, processes. What we do is raise um, steam, we drill two parallel wells down into the reserve. And these reserves tend to be deeper than the conventionally uh, mined ones. We put heat into the top well, and then that causes the bitumen to flow into the uh, second well. And we're able to bring the bitumen separated from the sand uh, to, to, to the surface. The great advantage of that process is that it has a much smaller um, environmental footprint. We're able to recycle a lot of the water that we use in that uh, process, so there's relatively small percentage of uh, makeup water. And what we call the tailings that go back into the mine, there aren't any, so uh, a much smaller environmental footprint. Extraction is the process whereby oil or bitumen is removed from the oil sand. This process is referred to as the hot water treatment, a method similar to that developed in the early part of the 20th century, but now much, much bigger and at a lower temperature. Using agitation and warm water, these impressive looking primary separation vessels in reality are just enormous sieves, allowing the oil sand slurry to settle out into its various layers. The most important of these layers is the layer of bitumen froth which rises to the top. The water, sand and clay sediments are called tailings and are pumped out to tailings ponds. At Sincrude and Suncor, the bitumen is run through a diluent recovery vessel to remove the naphtha and then sent off to an upgrader to create Alberta's now famous synthetic crude oil. In 2002, Canada supplied over 1.9 million barrels of crude oil and petroleum products to the U.S. marketplace every day, ranking it the largest exporter of oil to the U.S. that year. It is projected that production from oil sands will reach almost 2 million barrels per day over the next 10 years. By 2005, production is expected to account for 50% of total Canadian crude oil output and 10% of North America's output. Between Sincrude, Suncor, and Shell, more than 650,000 barrels of oil are pumped out each day to the tune of at least $8 billion a year in revenues. It has been predicted that $54 billion in oil sands projects will be developed over the next 10 years, and even more projects are being considered. The development of the oil sands creates direct and indirect jobs for Canadians and creates wealth for investors. The industry is extremely knowledge intensive and ever increasingly high tech. There are opportunities for lucrative and challenging careers for trade, college and university graduates, ensuring a future for youth, women and immigrants that is unprecedented anywhere in the world. For all the incredible advances in technology and the economic and social enrichment that the oil sands industry affords us, the environment is a critical area of concern. Oil sands visionaries, leaders and scientists recognize and acknowledge the impact this industry has on habitat, indigenous populations, water and air. 
An entire environmental protection industry has developed as a result of greater appreciation and feasibility of the crucial goal of sustainable development. The daily and long-term effects are being carefully monitored and techniques for development and implementation are regularly scrutinized. The industry has a very good track record of whenever they do a major expansion, they try to incorporate uh, state-of-the-art technologies to reduce the environmental impact, but it also improves the economics. Other areas that we've been working a lot in, of course, is, uh, is the whole area of land reclamation. And uh, we've done a lot of good research projects there, but uh, one of the ones I always like to talk about is uh, working with the chiefs. They actually identified an opportunity of Instead of putting the land back into trees and that, uh, why not put it back into grazing lands and bring down the wood bison from the north? So as we speak today at Sinkru, we have, besides mining oil sand and that, we have a, a herd of wood bison that's over 300. And, and we've done the studies and we're working in partnerships with uh, Fort Mackay and uh, over the long run, uh, we'll be able to sustain a herd of over 1,000 head and that will provide a revenue stream to Fort Mackay long after the oil sands are gone. So it's an excellent example of sustainable development. As the oil sands industry continues to expand and other conventional sources of oil and gas begin to run out, it is inevitable that oil sands will play a greater role in meeting Canada's and the world's petroleum needs. The way we actually uh, get our product to market is critically important. We're talking about um, significant volumes of material. We've got sophisticated um, networks whereby we get those products to market by pipeline. They've been the result of some of the partnerships that are absolutely crucial uh, to, to the future of the industry. And through that network we can get our products to 75 refineries in Canada and uh, North America. Production from oil sands uh, is about a third of the of the total production uh, coming out of Alberta today. We have uh, conventional oils in decline, natural gas, you know, uh, is more difficult to find. So our growth prospects, the prospects for growing our energy industry, would be pretty dim if we didn't have the oil sands. So uh, you know, it's it's made a it's made a huge difference to our future. The fact that we can economically exploit the oil sands, we have a hundreds of billions of barrels in the ground and we found an economic way to exploit that resource and that has to be a huge advantage for Alberta, Albertans going forward to the future. The future is very exciting. Um, it's, about, it's about massive growth. You put the largest market in the world next to one of the uh, largest reserves in the world and you've got very exciting times ahead of you. Um, and that's what my crystal ball sees. Um, exciting, rapid growth and um, the Canadian oil sands playing an, e an ever more important role in the uh, North American energy equation. Continuous improvement in science, technology, and management policies and practices are helping to overcome the ongoing challenges and meet society's need for energy as well as its expectation for sustainable development. The future is bright. Working toward energy self-sufficiency while minimizing the size and impact of the footprint is well in hand.